And um, I have my guest with me today, and uh, he's uh, a member of parliament for Takrade constituency. He's a member of the MPP, uh, second D, and uh, a new one, first time in parliament, and uh, a legal practitioner. Andrew Ejapamesa is here. Thanks for joining me. Thank How you. How are you? I'm well. Okay. Yourself? I'm good. And uh, we have to talk on the issues, but how was your weekend? I was okay, yeah. uh, as usual. Yeah. Uh, uh, social engagements and then uh, close it out with a Sunday service yesterday. And, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, so I had a good weekend. Uh, as, as a new MP, how, how is this transition like for you? Well, it's been, it's been quite interesting. Um, of course, uh, the constitu uh, constituency expectation uh, managing that together with the, 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 the duty to have to learn the ropes in Parliament has been quite an interesting challenge, if, if you like. Um, but I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, with time, we, we, we're still in the learning experience, though. Uh, it's a pretty tough terrain, I must confess. You know, uh, sometimes you wonder whether it's the right thing or right decision that you, you, you took because uh, you, you get overwhelmed with some of the issues that come up. Uh, uh, but I'm hopeful that as time goes on, uh, uh, it will get better. Uh, yeah, as, as lawyers, you, you do the transition better than many other professionals. Well, in terms of knowing or being abreast with the rules, uh, it's a little bit easier because uh, we are used to working with rules. The court, uh, high court, Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, in fact, even the District Court has rules which we are compelled to, to, to learn uh, as, as legal practitioners. So the standing orders of Parliament, which is cast in a sense in the same mode as the, the court rules, makes it relatively easier for you to, to catch up with, 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 with it. But the parliamentary process itself is entirely different from what, what pertains in court. So I guess uh, you can only get the advantage to the extent that you, you, you are used to reading uh, strict rules of, of that nature. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the opportunity for everybody you know, to, to, to apprise themselves of the rules is, is, is there. Usually the first time is. They're, they're always so nice to their constituents and to everybody. <laughs> um, and, uh, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Okay. Do you still pick the calls from your constituents? Of course I do. Sometimes you, you, it's difficult, you know, but as much as possible, I try to return uh, as many calls as I can. You, you leave your phone for 10 minutes and you have 80 missed calls. You know, of course, you can't respond to all of them because 80. the very moment, 8 zero. The very moment you get to the phone, the calls keep coming in. So you get, you know, to forget to return some calls. But mostly in the mornings uh, when I wake up after my regular daily prayer, I go through my phone to see. Uh, respond to messages, WhatsApp, uh, re return calls as many as I can. But you, 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 you always get to 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 hear others complain that ah, he doesn't pick our calls these days. But you know, it's I guess it's part of the. You've started hearing uh, them. Oh, of course. I mean, I I get to hear, you know, people complain that they they, they don't you you don't get to pick their calls. But my simple response these days that I was uh, someone told me was ask them whether they don't miss calls. Everybody does miss calls. So it is not the case that you deliberately refuse to pick calls. The, 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 the circumstances of, of the nature of the work does not allow you to pick calls at all times. And, and so, uh, well, some of them understand. And uh, subsequently, when they get to speak to you, they, they are that they are tempers, uh, as it were, go Since down. you so, started um, the term, uh, have you been going to the constituency very often? Yes, as much as I can uh, find time to, to go. Of course, the last time I was there was over the Easter period. I was going to go this week for the assembly, formal assembly meeting. You know, mem members of parliament are ex-official members yes. of the assembly. But I just got a phone call this morning on my way here that the meeting itself has been postponed. But I still need to go, you know, touch base, uh, attend some constituency meeting and all that. And then... Uh, Come back. Those phrases the, you use attend constituency meetings. What do they mean generally? When the well, there's a general says, meeting every Wednesday in my constituency, and uh, that is when members of the party congregate. We, you know, uh, uh, they, they get some information about the activities of the party. You know, regular, you know, political parties are associations. So 
regular association meetings that I believe you as a member of uh, your church, you belong to some groupings that you attend regular meetings. So that's, that's what it is. We're told that when you have to campaign, you have to fund your campaign. Of course. You it's have a to lot fund. of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Uh, you, you depends on your network, really. Because I had a lot of support during my campaign period, okay. you know. So, so um, you didn't spend your personal money. As oh, I did a lot spend. Of... I did spend. Uh, of course, you. It's something that you believe in. You have to invest in it, you know. So some resources will come from you personally. But if you have uh, the, the requisite social support network, then you get a lot of support from that end. And uh, I, I did receive a lot of support, and I use this medium to thank all those who supported me during my campaign, particularly last year. The benevolent contributors? Yes. Great. There were many of them. Well, we're told that when the politicians come into office, unfortunately, your party is in office. How do you hope to recoup all the investment? I don't see it as an investment. Of course, I mean, people who supported my... It's not an investment? I don't see it as an investment that requires uh, return. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a service to our country. We, we have chosen the part of democracy as a means of governing ourselves. And so, Elias, like, are you spent for free? Of course. How, how else am I going to recover the money? Well, Unless, of course, me. you are encouraging corruption, which uh, I think that... Uh, <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to do anything. <laughs> but how, how else? Because you know that the salaries of members of parliament is really nothing to write home about, if you ask me. Because mm. uh, in private practice, uh, in some instances, and in more than what, what I earn now as a, as a full-time public servant. But you still but, practice, or your firm is still Well, my, my firm is still there. I have lawyers in there. I have put in an application to the speaker to grant me permission to continue with private practice to the extent that it doesn't conflict with my public role. That approval has not come. Uh, so, yes, I go to my office every now and then, but I'm not an, an active courtroom You're in hibernation, I, so yes, to speak. if you like, yes. Mm. But what do you think, foremostly, are the needs of your constituency, second day? Jobs, 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 particularly for the youth. And uh, 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 I think it permeates every, every constituency in this country. And that was, I believe, the essence of our uh, uh, campaign messaging to the people. Because it's, it's so clear that the uh, issue of unemployment is, is one that needs to be tackled heads on. Uh, otherwise, there, there's really no future for, for our youth. So uh, the issue of employment is, is a major, major. Of course, thankfully, uh, my constituency is an urban one or a semi-urban one. Secondly, has seen better days before, and uh, it's on the decline. Uh, we Economic activity is slow. So those are major issues that need to be tackled. But we don't have issues, major issues, with roads, water, as other constituencies are. So our situation is peculiar. We, we, we have issue of jobs, and that is what is constantly engaging my mind as what we can do to, to ensure that uh, some jobs are created in the constituency, some economic activity is uh, uh, revived for, for, for the youth to get something to do. And the president has been on a tour of some uh, three West African countries. Yes. And uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, he met the Ghanaian community, now particularly uh, from second year and actually along the coast, of we course. know that we, have a, we yeah. have a lot of our migrants who go there, especially from the coastal communities. That's right. He's been talking on SADA, uh, but also linking it to uh, how government needs to make sure that his intention of uh, providing us per the budget, each uh, constituency $1 million yes. uh, comes to fruition by well managed. Um, what do you make of those intentions? Having $1 million for each constituency, and I'm sure uh, second D2 will be a beneficiary. I'm you? looking forward to receiving my portion of that uh, uh, fund. Of course, it's, it's, it's a very bold initiative that, that His Excellency's government, uh, and, and, and this was clearly mentioned to the people of Ghana during the electioneering campaign season. And uh, uh, the funds have, in fact, been approved in the 2017 budget for the rollout of the program. But, you know, if you listen to the president speak, we've had experience with development institutions or organizations in this country. Uh, the infamous SADA one 
is, is, is there for all to see where huge sums of monies that were intended to go directly to the development uh, uh, of the savannah communities were, were essentially squandered, if you like, uh, apart from Guinea fowls that flew to Burkina Faso and never came back. Uh, some 300 million cities that uh, really there's nothing to show for. Uh, it's important as a government to learn from the mistakes of others and, and to put in place the, 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 the requisite regime that ensures that those are not repeated. I believe that that is the sense of what the president was conveying, that he doesn't want the SADA scandal to befall his government. So, yes, people are impatient. People are waiting to see the one million that they know have been, has been approved in the budget to be disbursed. But it is important that we put in place the proper mechanisms that ensures that there's proper accountability of these funds. So that is the sense of what the president was con conveying over the weekend uh, when, when he addressed... Uh, is that when we're going to have, let's say, the various development authority, let's say the coastal... Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the vehicle through which these funds are going to be managed. Okay. Uh, the modalities, I believe, would be made clearer when the legislation comes uh, uh, to Parliament. Uh, I understand by, by, by the end of this month when, when we resume sitting. Uh, and so we'll know the details at that point. But uh, I think it's a very, very, very uh, uh, worthy example that the President intends to set in terms of our uh, management of our public finances by ensuring that the proper mechanisms are put in place to ensure nobody uh, uh, squanders these kinds of monies that has, has uh, happened in the past uh, NDC administration. Mm -hmm. well, quite interesting. Um, you, you, your constituency is, is not sandwiched between any, any, any two districts, are they? No, I, my constituency is actually a, a metro. No, uh, it's a, metro. a metropolitan okay. uh, constituency. So there's, there's five constituencies within the STMA, the, of course. This is not directed at districts. This is constituency sure. specific. So every constituency would, would have uh, its, its fair share. Mm. Uh, oh, that's good news. Yeah, I'm asking is. this because relatedly also, we're supposed to be having uh, a factory at least established in each, each of the... So STMA yes. will have one. Well, at least one. That is my understanding. But that's that, a bigger uh, one. Because STMA is a, is a... If you look at the, the dimension of course, the constituency... Of course. Of course. It is a huge... Uh, uh, metropolis that's the third largest in in our country and uh, uh, that explains possibly why the, the appointment to those three major uh, uh, including Temali was made earlier in time than, than the, the rest of the, the district appointments were made uh, only time like I always say will tell as to as to how uh, the, the, the programs and policies of the government can be achieved, measured, uh, you know, uh, as time goes on. The government is only four months uh, in, in office. Uh, there's a huge expectation uh, from the people of Ghana. But uh, we, 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 I believe that uh, the, the, the foundation is being laid and that uh, in the fullness of time we will see the fruits that, that to be born out of the programs and policies that the, the government is implementing. I expect that the, the metropolis will have more than one factory, you know, because of course the numbers of people there, only one factory, you know, is not, is not going to solve the problems, uh, you know. But beyond the factory, uh, I believe that other uh, private sector players, you know, with the, with the economy growing, improving, uh, interest rates coming down, uh, people's entrepreneurial ability will be enhanced and uh, more jobs will be created for, for the team in youth. Why do you think, possibly, if there could be some sectors within the metropolis that uh, a factory could be established or various ones could be, which sectors would they be? It's a fishing community, largely. You know, you know in the past, uh, when the timber was booming, uh, Sekendi Takradi was a, was a timber hub, a whole lot of uh, timber uh, processing plants scattered across the, 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 the metropolis. But timber is no more. Uh, unfortunately, we failed to plant as we cut the trees down. So 
that industry has practically collapsed. Uh, it's a fishing community, uh, the evolving oil industry uh, can, can, can create some jobs there. You know, there's, a, there's an indication in the manifesto to create an oil services hub in the western region. It's again, Itakradi being the biggest metropolis there, I believe that most of those activities would, would have to be channeled to that uh, locality to ensure that uh, our youth get some, some jobs to do. Yeah. Your, your area, uh, where your constituency is located, uh, STMA, doesn't suffer from Galamse activities, does it? Not at all. No. It does not. The Galamse is, is, is in the Takwa, Pristia areas. Those but, areas? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Itakra Day hasn't got any okay. good mining activity uh, taking place there. To my knowledge, I'm, I'm not aware that there's any Galamse menace within. Just like Accra, there's no Galamse in Accra Tema, where the mass of the people reside. And so uh, that's, that's exactly what pertains in, in Second Itakra Day. Mm. How do you think um, that government, perhaps through its policies, can bring or breathe a lot more life into the local economy of, uh, of Takrade, second year, etc.? Yeah, um, like I was saying, uh, the, the mainstay is fishing. It's, it's not entirely fishing. The fishing, you will find fishing in the second year and new Takrade. Okay. Uh, the rest oh, of, of, of the metropolis is, is not fishing based, purely commercial and uh, there are quite a few industries are, 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 are around uh, dotted um, within, within the metropolis as well. Uh, uh, Wamco, which was a cocoa processing, uh, some challenge and, and a revival would, would, would be in the right direction if you ask me. Uh, like I was saying, the new oil economy uh, also poses some advantage that we can tap into to ensure that uh, you know the local economy is revived. Uh, with that, uh, you know, the several other uh, uh, businesses that can feed onto such an anchor, you know, that 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 will help in generating the needed jobs that that the people so much desire. Uh, and 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 I, I, like I said, the plants are there, uh, and uh, the revival of the railway sector, which was also a major employer for the residents in Segendi Takradi, uh, is on stream. Uh, I know Honorable Jogati, the Minister for Railway Development, is working assiduously to ensure that this mandate is achieved within the four-year term that we have, and and. Uh, uh, I, I clearly, knowing what I know, uh, believe that the future is, is really bright for Sekindi Takradi Metropolis and the entire country as a whole. Well, thank you very much. And uh, let's turn attention to some mainstream issues. Very well. And uh, we know four Chinese miners who defied um, the ban on mining to work in a central, uh, Amansia Central District were arrested by the Immigration Service at Obuasi over the weekend. Um, they claim to be working for a Chinese woman named Aisha, etc. But we know Galamsi has been a big issue for many of us. Uh, now the media has a, a whole campaign on the subject. First, um, excuse me. How, at the end of the day, do we want the country to be rid of this well, so called Galamsi? Well, uh, because the good Lord himself has endowed this country with uh, natural resources, gold, diamonds, what have you, mining would be with us forever. Uh, there's no way that mining can be stopped. It's the proper... Uh, uh, application of, 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 of the mining techniques that does not lead to a degradation of our environment that has become the issue. That's, that's my understanding of the fight against Galamse. Uh, small scale mining has been with us forever and it's going to remain. It is the destruction of our water bodies by particularly the Chinese who introduced you know, heavy duty equipment into 
our small scale mining sphere that is creating the problem. Uh, I'm very, very happy about the approach that this government has taken against Galamsey to the extent that I understand the BNI report has named some key individuals in our country who are involved in these activities. I think we should go against them forcefully uh, to ensure that we bring sanity into the, 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 the mining of our natural resources. Um, the president himself has said clearly that he's looking to a responsible mining activity regime in our country. So uh, it's, 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 it's in the right direction that uh, some arrests have been made. I, I have heard over the weekend that it was in the news that uh, some of these people uh, work for some individuals who have huge connection in, 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 in government. And I think that the uh, Natural Resource Ministry should not entertain any such people who, uh, as it were, use their offices for, for, for personal gain that clearly is detrimental to, to the well-being of our country. And so uh, the law, law enforcement agencies should go out forcefully against these people, prosecute them, set the right examples so that uh, uh, we, we can preserve our environment, save our water bodies for, for the next generation. Well, so um, we want to get you some perspective on this, and so please watch this. Even in the face of a ban on small-scale mining across the country, these Chinese nationals threw caution to the wind and were arrested at a mining site at Bipo Tintin in the Amansia Central District of Ashanti. Even before they could be processed by immigration officials, our news team lent their colleagues were back at the same site working. We were briefed that in order to catch them in the act, we needed to park our branded vehicle go through Dunkwao, I am free, to Dominasi and cross the river of Finn before we could go on motorbikes to the site. We arrived at this site belonging to this Chinese lady, Miss and Huang, also known as Aisha. Even after our surprise snoop in on them, we had information in the night they were still working at the same site. vacated this place but then she is in here mining on the blind side of government with with such impunity and I understand she has mined and stolen many concessions in this area belonging to other mineral resources companies and she does so without impunity because she has the strong backing of strong political forces this is the same place that four Chinese nationals were arrested yesterday by the immigration services. Now, the on a site we are in India. Well, so she's telling me that they are working and in collaboration with their Chinese counterparts. They've been told to run away when officials are coming in here. I've been asking him uh, who this site belongs to, and he says, Aisha, the Chinese woman we are talking about. She has strong back and back in the previous government, uh, the NDC government, and um, per our sources, she pays highly to security couples. The police, the military, the immigration services, the minerals commission, they all take their cut according to our sources on the ground. And so they ensure and serve as tip-offs or sources for them. So on the road, we had to disguise ourselves, pass through a long terrain 
to come in here, dress as Galanseas. Other than that, before we come here, they would have been gone, vanished into thin air. So you find the site empty and you think they are not mining, but indeed they are in here mining. So when our news team got here, we saw them running uh, towards this side. And we are told this is the modus operandi of the Chinese people. So when the security agencies come through the normal way, one, they have members of the police force itself who have been stationed at certain vantage points the barriers and so in the official vehicle of the security agencies that pass by information is leaked onto several people lined up along the road as we came in and they forward this to the team over here and so before you come you find nothing just machines that are not working which gives you the impression that this place has been dormant for a while now we saw them run towards this end and as you can see, these pipes lead to another site where they are operating. And so we try to chase them, but it's a dead end because they know their way here very much. These are Chinese nationals who have stayed in the bush for a long time and are able to navigate their way through this end to another site, bought some motorbikes and off. So it's difficult getting them on this land. So if the authorities are serious, about cabin, Galam say, this is what they have to deal with. The difficulty is there to see. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus, Asari Donko, Bepotenting, Ashanti region. Mm, but that's the problem that we have. And, and Laura Mesa, you can see the perspective even from the Ashanti Absolutely. Region. And you go to those areas in the western region, it creates even a lot more difficulties for the communities after these illegal miners have left. Um, what well, we know that perhaps even the local chiefs are also interested. We have big wigs in, among the political elite who are also perpetrators, etc. How do, you, do we deal with something that looks a lot more complex than we're looking at it? It's, it's the will. You know, when, when there's a will, there's always a way. I mean, look at the way they're, they're, they're destroying the environment. I mean, we, we've, we've been having mining in this country the Ashanti Golds and the Pristia Golds and the Takwa Gold mining companies have been with us forever. Small scale mining has been with us forever. It's the introduction of heavy equipment without uh, proper regulation that is creating this, this, this mess. And I think that we owe it a duty to ourselves and to the next generation to make sure that this thing is regulated and regulated properly. I mean, if, if we don't do that, I mean, what, what kind of country are we going to leave, leave our children? You know, I went to Adesado and uh, our old enjoins us to, to add to the gains of those who, who have come before us. It's important that we as a people, uh, whilst we exploit the resources for our benefit, make sure that we do it in a manner that is, is sustainable so that those who come after us would, would, would meet a better and a well-regulated well environment. I mean, this cannot continue in this present state. I get very emotional when I see these pictures on our, on our screens. I mean, I drive over the uh, uh, River Pra every time I'm going in and out of my constituency, and I feel so sad. I mean, how can we sit and allow our water bodies to be destroyed in, in this manner? And Cobras and all of them, Birim, is all being destroyed for people's personal selfish interest and we cannot as a country allow this thing to go on forever and and and, and I would I would I would encourage uh, his excellency the president to go at this thing hard and make sure that 
we, we, we preserve our environment whilst we regulate those who go through the licensing regime to obtain licenses to mine. You believe that better regulation? Yes, of would course. Sure. Yes. How, how, how would that ensure that we have a, a better, more sanitized? You see, sometimes I, I, I wonder industry. when we complain there's unemployment, yet we have so many people who can be engaged to monitor the activities of, of these people. You had some regions and some districts, the uh, Minerals Commission officials there who are supposed to regulate this thing, two, three. Yet we have unemployment. We have so many people <laughs> who have finished school and don't have jobs to do. Why can't we recruit people to make sure that they police the environment such that these things are not, are not happening? We can do it. If we have the will to do it, we can do it. I mean, there's nothing that is beyond us as a people. And, and the, 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 the direction that will come from leadership is what is going to determine as to whether we will succeed with this fight against Galamse or not. But I, I always say that the president has a huge responsibility to his, 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 his tenure, uh, that if he wants to leave a legacy, this should be one of the things that should engage him constantly. And I know that the minister is capable. Uh, we, should, we should not spare any expense at all to ensure that this thing is sanitized and, and we have a, 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 a more sustainable mining experience in, in this country. At, at the end of the day, uh, we also know that um, the, cost, the constant effort to make sure we sanitize the industry is important. Uh, now, if based on, for example, uh, the revelations by Kukubaku Jr. over the weekend on News File, on Joy News and Joy FM, indicating that um, these um, perpetrators of these illegal activities really seem to be having some linkages with our yeah. political elites, yeah. etc. How do we tackle a problem that is deeply rooted in our society? What else, what else can we do? Are we going to allow this thing to go on because a few people who should know better are, are in bed with, with, with the people who are perpetrating these crimes against our country? Clearly not. We should be able to be bold, name and shame those, those people who are involved. Uh, the president has given a clear indication when he was in Bronga Afro region uh, to launch the, the, the planting for food and jobs that even chiefs irrespective of your social standing, if, if, if we have to deal with you in accordance with law. We have to. And this, 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 this Galancé issue is not negotiable as far as I'm concerned. You know, I've heard people say that, well, uh, there's a political price to pay, but which is better? Sacrificing the, the sustenance of our country on the altar of politics or doing what is right to ensure that the system is cleaned up. Uh, if we have to deal with those who are associated with us and who have compromised themselves in the manner that Kwekubako said over the weekend. Well, there are consequences for every action and people should be able to uh, uh, face the music when, 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 when it is played. After all, nobody sent them or asked them to go and, uh, uh, as it were, engage in activity that clearly they knew at the time that they were going into whatever relationships with this lady, that if they are caught, uh, the consequences will be what it, what it would be. And, and so we shouldn't shy away from, from uh, uh, dealing with them ruthlessly. In, in, and I'm, I'm praying that uh, uh, once the momentum is here, Mr. Bako should do well to release those tapes uh, for all of us to see the people who are involved uh, and, and the appropriate punishment meted out to them. But I mean, for me, uh, we don't have a choice. Uh, there, there's, there's no alternative. We have to deal with this matter and deal with it now. Uh, so we can't wait two years' time or three years' time. Or, or that we can't postpone dealing with Galamse at all. We do so to, to our own peril. And I'm not sure that any a rational patriot would ask that because a few uh, 
powerful uh, people uh, in the previous government, and I understand even in this present government, have been compromised. We should we should let this fight slip uh, uh, and, and and not do anything about about it. We we have to we have to root those who are destroying our environment out and make sure that we regulate the industry uh, so that people can do sustainable mining. There's no choice. How about the talk that, uh, and, and uh, the minister has spoke, uh, spoken consistently on this, that after we do the evictions or perhaps the seizures and we rid the communities of these illegal galamsias in the interim, uh, how, how do we make sure that we do some other forms of reintegration for them by, by, by way of um, other sectoral areas where they can earn some income? I, I, you know, yes, there ought to be alternative livelihoods that are created for some of these people. But um, um, some of them can still go back. Uh, it's not the case that we are, we are stopping uh, uh, small-scale mining. That is not my understanding at all. Uh, we have to regulate the, 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 the small-scale mining, make sure that people are not mining in our water bodies or close to our water bodies because otherwise, you know, so it, it is, it is I, I, my understanding of the, 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 the process as it is now is to stop the illegal activities, take stock of where we are. I, we all heard the minister saying that uh, government has to engage in some reclamation of some lands and, and, and all that and see where we can properly map out and issue appropriate licenses to people who want to do small-scale mining. Or if the law ought to be amended to introduce some uh, 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 medium-scale mining activities where uh, uh, some of these equipments are allowed to, to, to participate and in, in, in the mining activities, well, that's, that's what we have to do. But we have to make sure that whatever we do going forward is in a sustainable manner. People, after mining, ought to reclaim the pits that they've dug, replant on them. And it is only through proper regulation, through proper registration and licensing regime mm. that we can attain that, that, that kind of uh, uh, sustainable mining that we, 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 we're saying ought to be the case, uh, as opposed to this wanton uh, destruction of the environment as, as is pertaining now. And uh, we, we hope that the exercise will end in, in the positive uh, at the end of the day. There's no other way. But the party and also government has received threats, I think particular, particularly um, on, the, on the person of the president, that he could lose votes at the end of the day, when even he has any chance of trying to retain his, his party in power in 2020, is, is it not a fear for you members of the party, uh, especially you those who have a certain key responsibility in the party in your various areas of jurisdiction? Yes, he could lose votes and he could gain votes because for those right thinking Ghanaian who see the president doing what is right and who possibly did not vote him for him in the last 10, can say that, ah, this is somebody that uh, I, I'm prepared to entrust my destiny in, into his hands and vote for him in, in 2020 if he, he, he puts himself up to contest again for, for the presidential election. I mean, there's a price that we have to pay for every, every decision that we take. I think that, uh, uh, yes, to the extent that some people will be deprived from uh, perpetrating their illegality, uh, uh, it is the right thing to do. I mean, we cannot sacrifice uh, 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 clear illegality uh, on the altar of political expediency. And I believe that uh, so long as people see that this is yielding positive results, uh, that alternative livelihoods, one district, one factory coming up, some people would get uh, employment in those areas. Uh, of course, 
when the regulation is done and uh, it is being managed properly, uh, uh, some of the people who are participating and who have been stopped now can be re-engaged, uh, but in a much more sustainable manner. So um, they immediately, yes, that would be the kinds of things that people will say, that we're not going to vote for you in 2020. But when they see that, look, the president means well, and it's for the benefit of all of us, uh, uh, they, they, they would ultimately come around to support him. And, and, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, Ghana will be the better for it. Mm. Well, uh, we'll have to move on to some other subjects. And uh, we already know that uh, Yoko has been in the news over the last two weeks, particularly because <laughs> of uh, um, Ibrahim Mahama, who is a former, uh, uh, the, the brother of the former president, John Romani Mahama, but also chief executive for EMP engineers and planners and other companies. We're told that uh, from the last week he's paid um, uh, his liabilities to the GRE. Uh, but uh, just over the last 24 hours also, the news media has been reporting about uh, the the Yoko itself, that's the Economic and Organized Crime um, Unit, uh, inviting the former chief executive for Maslok, um, Selassie Tamakla you know, And uh, well, following those news reports, there have been the reactions from the public that um, it seems that government and using some quasi-state institutions is, is on a, a witch hunt. Well, if uh, witch hunting is going to yield 12 million of our money to be repaid, and then so be it. I, I don't see it as witch hunting at all. I mean, in the case of Mr. Mahama, we all have seen the outcome of the investigations and what has led to. It's led to him having to pay back to the state monies that he should have paid in 2015. You and I also import items sometimes. I bought a vehicle from Dubai before that I had to clear from the port. And he accepted any post checks from me. I know that people go into arrangements with GRA to pay their taxes over time. But was it the case in this instance? And assuming that it was the case, that he had gone into a legitimate arrangement to pay the taxes over a certain period. 44 checks that were all returned, accounts that were not operational. Clearly, this was an individual who uh, exploited the, the fact that his, his brother was the president for his personal gain. And if the state institution who were supposed to have acted then uh, did not act. And the people of Ghana have entrusted the management of this country in the hands of new people who are insisting that the right things are done. And you call that witch hunting. Well, to the extent that this 12 million has been paid, you and I should be happy. And if people have done some else, uh, whilst in office, I, I think they should be prepared to be held accountable for their actions. I don't, I don't see see this as witch hunting at all. Unless, of course, we want to close shop as a country and go to sleep and allow people to do whatever they want with impunity. Then let's say so. But to the extent that we have institutions that we ourselves have set up, knowing very well that we all agree that people who are put in responsible positions ought to do their jobs in the interest of the state. And that if you don't do your job uh, to our expectation, we would engage in investigations and, and, and hold you to account. And that's what has to happen. Uh, I have seen the notice from... Uh, Yoko? Uh, uh, no, I haven't oh, seen the notice. from the lawyers? From the lawyers. Of, <laughs> you know, um, the former chief executive of Maslow? The former chief executive of Maslow. That she's out 
on an uh, important family assignment that she was going to fully cooperate uh, with with Yoko when she comes back. I didn't see any allegation of witch hunting in there uh, because if you hold public office, uh, you you should expect that when you leave and some some irregularities irregularities are, are identified during your tenure. Uh, it goes without saying that you ought to be called to explain why those irregularities have occurred. Uh, and and I'm, I'm glad they did not allege witch hunting, but rather uh, <laughs> threatening people who go out there and, uh, uh, as it were, uh, 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 <laughs> well, uh, there's, a, there's a story um, on the front page of the Ghanaian Times. It talks about um, advice coming from the World Bank to the government of the Republic of Ghana that uh, we need to renegotiate as a country energy tariffs with IPPs. And, and they are in, in power producers. The story is on page 15 of the paper. And basically talks about how the World Bank has given an indication based on uh, an advice that uh, the country needs to be power export competitive. And um, it says base, uh, Ghana has done um, relatively well in the energy sector. We've attracted a lot of the IPPs, but constantly um, the pricing per what we produce as par is not competitive enough. Yes, and the reason that they gave was because uh, some of these contracts uh, were signed through sole sourcing and were not competitive. And so we've signed in excess of 40 power purchase agreements with, with independent power producers. And if those projects are all implemented, mm. then there will be a glut. Uh, we'll have excess demand, excess supply over what we actually uh, require. Okay. And so it may be important for us to prevent these uh, uh, generated power line idle, to sell it on the market. But the agreements that we signed mm. makes it practically impossible for us to sell because whilst we are selling or buying at above 11 cents per kilowatt hour, the average price on the market in West Africa is under nine. So it is important that if you don't want, otherwise then we may have to subsidize uh, the differential uh, to, 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 to be competitive. Why, why, why would any government want to do that? Mm. You know, so it's important that some of these things are renegotiated. As a lawyer, uh, um, how, how do we do that renegotiation when we know that these are agreements that already have been signed, passed by oh, parliament? Of course, I mean, they, they are not being revoked. Uh, uh, and uh, so Renegotiation is a renegotiation. If the parties agree uh, that uh, we have to revise the prices in a manner that is mutually beneficial to the parties. I believe that there is a sense that you can succeed with some, and in some other instances, we, 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 we may not succeed. Because I was just about to ask you, in what circumstances could we have a party who, in, in an agreement between us and whoever the IPP is, uh, not agreeing to a renegotiation in any time. Yeah, some, some may insist that, well, uh, we exert our pound of flesh. This is a, an agreement that has been signed. We are not prepared to sit with you to renegotiate any of the terms whatsoever. And uh, there's, there's practically not much that we can do in, in those circumstances. But I believe that, uh, uh, and you recall that uh, during the State of the Nation address, the president clearly indicated that even though some, are, some of these agreements have been signed, mm. uh, they have actually not commenced the, 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 the implementation of the agreements that some renegotiation was going to be done with them. Some may have to be cancelled and, and, and all that. I don't know the, the, the status of that engagement, but it's consistent with what, I, what the IMF is, is suggesting, that if we do not begin to plan now and all these 
IPPs come on stream, then we'll be saddled with a situation where we'll have too much power than we, we actually need. And then when that happens, and you, you cannot pass it on to our neighboring countries who may be in need of them because of the price, then we, we may have to be saddled with, with paying high costs of electricity and subsidizing it for, for other countries. That, that will not be a prudent thing to do. So it's important that that conversation commences now to, to see where we, we get to uh, going forward. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for joining us this morning. We're grateful. Is that My your pleasure. first time on the show? And we yes. hope that we can call on you any time that we deem fit. And then you will honor that invitation as well. I will. Okay. So we've been in the studio with um, uh, Andrew Ejapa Mesa, the member of parliament for Second D, and uh, also a legal practitioner. Thanks for joining me.